is Kevin. I am a lighting designer for theatre, dance and opera. I've worked with NI Opera on a number of occasions, uh, most recently on Kiss Me Kate and before that Deflator Mouse. Usually I spend my time in a darkened theatre working with light, shining, on, shining lights on people, objects and seeing how that light will impact the world that we create in the theatre. Because I can't be in a theatre at the moment, we're all at home, uh, I decided that it would be a good idea for us to make an at-home theatre that we can play with. Okay, so we're going to go through and today and make a shadow puppet theatre and make some shadow puppets to go in the theatre. Do you want to introduce yourself to people? Hi, my name is Isabel. And we are going to be ma making a shadow puppet theatre today to show you how to stick them on the um, sticks mm -hmm. and how to cut out the hat and the teeth in the mini piece obviously. Cool, will I show them the theatre? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so there's various different things you're going to need to make the theatre, okay? Mm -hmm. The theatre itself is going to be a cardboard box, Isabel has it here, we hold it up. Here's a cardboard box. I painted one that I got in the supermarket. So you might have a box lying around your house or I'm sure you can go to a local supermarket and get it. Um, we we'll need a box to make the theatre. To help us cut out everything, you might need a knife or some scissors. Be very careful. Make sure you have a grown up with you if you're using that. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna need some tape. Maybe a measuring tape to help us uh, measure things. And then, the front of the theatre, the front of our stage, is going to be some sort of tracing paper or indeed you can use some greaseproof paper, some baking paper, yeah? Um, but most importantly, you, you, you have to be careful about them. Yeah, you're absolutely right because they're sharp and you need to be very careful that a grown helps you. So. We need the theatre, we need, and then we need some black card to make uh, our puppets. I'm going to cut out our puppets with that. Some skewers to stick everything together. Um, sticks. sticks, okay. We might need some of these. These are brass fasteners that we can use to give our puppet figures some movement. Okay, these are very, very small ones that I happen to have, but you might have some bigger ones. Okay. Um, then over here we have some coloured plastic which we can use to change the colour of the light. So we can hold all these various coloured plastics up in front of the light and you can change the colour of your light. If you don't have plastic folders like that, maybe some coloured bottles and we can make anything really that you can shine light off. Okay, we can play with all of that later on. Okay, so let's move everything out of the way and we will get the theatre up. So, we have a cardboard box. I painted it. I've cut out the bottom so that I can get at it quite easily. So, what we're going to do is, on the front side here, we're going to cut out an opening, which will be our proscenium opening, which is the opening in the stage. Okay? Then we're going to stick some paper on our opening so that we can project the shadows onto the paper. We're going to cut a circle out the back that we can put our desk lamp through. And then we're going to cut a slit in the side so that we can put our hands in to operate the puppets. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how big the taser is and how so, we're going to do 50 mil all around the edge. We need to get our ruler and a pencil, white pencil. We're going to mark 50 mil all around the edge. Okay, once we have the hatch marked out in pencil, we can get either a scissors or a knife to cut it out. Okay, I'm going to use a knife. 
if you're going to use a craft knife like this, you need to get a grown up to help you with it. Okay, so I'm going to score along the line. Here we go, this is going to be the stage. We don't need that. And we need to cut a piece in the back, this size. So the lamp we're using is this big lamp here. I'm going to draw a circle around the lamp. circles. Now if you don't have a craft knife like this you can use the scissors. There's our circle. There we go, we don't need that bit. So there's our two cutouts and then we need another cutout on the side so that we can get in operate our puppets. I'm going to take a cut out on the side so that we can operate our puppets. Like in Panto, if you came. Like in the Panto, they did magic. But if you didn't come, that, that's a shame. Because I do fireworks. Fireworks. We do fireworks in the Panto, don't we? So, we have our sheet of tracing paper. So a nice little piece off the edge. Just cutting up the tracing paper. Okay. Have your tracing paper cut to size, you can put it in. We need to make sure that there is no light going to leak out around it, so you put tape all the way around it. So I've done the two sides, bottom edge. So our next step is to build our puppets. So we take our white card and a light colored pencil that can be seen on the card. Maybe we will start with a moon. So if we draw around our tape, almost a full circle, and then let's fill it in. Let's take our scissors. So I'm using black card here, but you can use any card you have. Black is probably best because it means that when you shine light on it, it doesn't bounce off it. If you use black, it'll be much clearer and you'll have a sharper image. Okay, so we have our moon and we want to get maybe a short piece of stick on the back of the moon. Take a piece of tape and we stick our stick to the back and take another piece of tape and 
and I'm going to stick it on the back there like this, and I'm going to stick it on in, and I'm going to stick it up on top here, as close to the screen as I can get. Now you'll see that I've also made some other pieces earlier on and stuck them in as well. So I have our moon that we've just put in, we have our tree in the foreground and we have our castle in the background. So you'll see the more cutouts you do, the more interesting shape you'll have. So you can create any scene you want simply using card and cutout. And then we can start to put things inside. So I've cut out a dragon and we need to be able to operate our dragon. So let's take one of our skewers, turn the dragon over, lay the skewer on the back. We need to put a little tab on the back of our skewer first so that the tape sticks to it. Little tab there, like that. Check it's not wider than the wings. It is a little, so we'll trim it down. That's good. So now we have something for the tape to stick to. So I take one piece of tape, stick it to the tab, stick it to the wing. And now if I flip this over, I get a piece of tape, stick it to there and stick it onto that one. Now I have a dragon that I can operate from the back. So if I stick my hand in, come in here, oops, you can see that my dragon can be operated but it's not so visible that the stick is at the back. So the closer the dragon is to the screen, the sharper you'll be. So you can play with the distance between your, your figures and the light. So the dragon can disappear into the distance. Right up against the light, he's quite smudged and out of focus. But if we bring him closer, he'll get sharper and sharper and sharper. So you can play with the distance between the figure and the light and you can get lots of different effects. So this dragon, we can get to fly in and create our scene. I'm going to leave our dragon sitting down there for a moment because we can take the control of these puppets to the next level. I've made a little girl here as well. So I've got my little girl with top and bottom. So her legs and her, and her body are completely separate. The reason I've done that is so that we can make them have more movement. If we take one of our little brass fasteners here, we can pop that through the little hole I've made in the girl's dress through the little hole at the top of her legs and take at the back, splay out the brass fasteners like that. So that now the little girl's legs and body will move independently. So we do the same trick. We take a skewer, we lay it on her backside, tape to make our tab, check that it's not wider than the girl, we're good. And I take a little bit of tape here. Make sure that you don't stick the tape to her legs because you want the legs to be nice and free. Flip it over again. Another piece of tape straight up here. So now we can operate our girl again. Same story with her legs moving freely. But if we were to put a second control on this puppet so that we can control her body and her legs separately, we take another skewer, one on the back, and this time, I'm, this time I'm going to take very narrow pieces of tape, stick it along her leg, overhang, another piece, stick it along her leg, stick it to the skewer, flip it over, and then we'll slide that up her leg like that. against the background and I can move her like a little puppet. Get her to move to the dragon and she can slay the dragon. And there's our scene. Yeah. 
So you can make any shapes you want. So the next thing to do is we can change the tone of our scene as well. So we have lots and lots of different colored plastics that we showed you earlier on. So any piece of plastic that the light can shine through. The clearer plastic, the better. If it's frosted like this one, it might not work all that well, but I have a purple piece back here. I could have slipped in the top of our theater earlier on, and I can slide this through the slit on top of the light, all the way down, and you'll see that the color, whole color of the space can change. Let me do the light so you can see that much better. So the whole colour of the space can change. So you can be completely in control of how that space looks. Yeah. So you can choose any plastics you have around the house. Um, if you don't have plastic folders like that, maybe some shampoo bottles that we saw earlier on, or a mineral bottle, something like that. One thing to be careful with this is don't put it too close to the lamp because we don't want it to go on fire. And when we're not using the lamp in the theatre, we need to make sure it's turned off. Okay, so I have set up a little water scene here. So you'll see I've done a cut out of a shark. I have some hanging seaweed and we have the coral reef at the bottom. You'll see that the light is blue. I have, rather than use a piece of plastic this time, I have put a piece of lighting gel in front of the light. That's what we use in the theatre to change the colour, uh, similar to the folder we used earlier on. And you'll see that instead of the light shining at the screen as we had before, it's shining down below and it's shining on some tin foil. So as we move the tin foil, you'll see that the light shimmers and it starts to shimmer around the background. So you can create lots and lots of different effects as you play with items around your house. Do you want to tell a story? Once a little man was walking down the road, back to home, but then she was very shocked and she met a dragon. <gasps> we were very shocked, but then the dragon apparently said hello. Then she hopped onto the dragon, and then the dragon flew off, and then they went on an adventure. <laughs> cool. But then they bumped into the tree, and the dragon fell. But then rose back up again, and then started flying backwards. Okay, go, go, go. And then the little girl continued back and got home. The end. Hey, well done, sweetheart. Thank you very much for joining us to make our shadow puppet theatre. I hope you guys enjoy making your own shadow puppets at home. So from me and from Isabel, goodbye. Bye.